Alright guys, so today we're gonna be reacting to geog geography now, Germany. One of you guys recommended this video in the comment section, so I just wanted to follow up on that. Since there's a lot of people from Germany, thank you so much for the support you guys have given me. I'm very, very pleased and very, um, uh, very happy that you guys are supporting the channel. Always make sure you like to subscribe. We're enjoying the journey so far for Germany, and I might just try with other countries as well. But in the meantime, let's jump in. Let's see what's going on here. All right. All right. Leader Hosen Schnitzel beer, Bratwurst order bread and beer, complicated history beer, no humor, EDM, and gummy bears that will kind of like give you diarrhea, but it's like worth it. Ugh, those are such horrible stereotypes that every German is so sick and tired of hearing. One gummy bear? It's time to learn geography. No! Hey everyone, I'm your host Barbie. So, we've conquered Belgium's castle, jumped through Denmark's lagoon, danced through France's forest, and now we've made it to the final boss of the EU, Kingpin Germany. Level 1, begin. Okay, let's see what's going on. <clears throat> ah, you know why I'm smiling. Yep, Germany has a lot of territorial anomalies. We'll get into that in a little bit, but first, Germany is located in central western Europe, bordered by nine other countries, don't forget little Luxembourg, with small coasts on the north and Bal- I would like to know Belgium and Germany, what's going on there? What is going on there? I thought Virgin Belgium was part of the Netherlands, maybe? I might be missing something. Baltic seas, which they own about 50 small islands. Now, Germany, like oh. the US, is a federal republic which has 16 smaller states, or yep. Bundeslande, each with its own constitution, three of which are cities, the capital Berlin, Hamburg, and Bremen, which is actually kind of like two cities, including Bremerhaven on the coast, but they kind of act like one <coughs> entity. <laughs> Fun side note, <laughs> Lower Saxony is actually geographically situated further north than regular Saxony. Now let's jump into the fun stuff. Now, we already discussed the Jungholz Quadrapoint and the Venbon Railway Enclave with Belgium and Austria. However, there's a few more. The entire town of Bussingen am Hochrhein is surrounded by Switzerland, whereas part of the Constance is cut off by the Rhine River and surrounded by Switzerland. However, immediately across the river, a small patch of empty land on the German side actually belongs to Switzerland. Finally, Ooh. they split the island of Usedom with Poland in the north. Germany is interesting because every state wow. in the country has its own distinct culture, dialect, history, food, traditions. I mean, Bavarians will be quite drastically different from Schwestlig Holsteiners. Mecklenburg-Pommern will be different from Saarland. This all has to do with ancient and recent history. Basically, in the quickest way I can summarize this, Germanic tribes, Roman wars, Charlemagne, three kingdoms, this guy marries an Italian, creating a whole new mess called the Holy <laughs> Roman Empire made up of 300 smaller separate kingdoms, states, and dukedoms, which had nothing to do with Romans. Teutonic Knights, Brandenburgs became Prussia, Habsburgs became Austrians, Lithuanians and Poles made their own thing, whereas the Hungarians joined the Austrians. Wars, wars, wow, battles, battles, bro. Napoleon comes over and messes everything up, and finally, German nationalism surges, and in 1871, Otto von Bismarck creates the first proto-German unified state. And then they're all like, oh, Dang, we came late to this game. We gotta scramble for some colonies. And that's how all of these countries at one point spoke German. Oh, and also keep really? in mind, like 300 years before this, a German banking company obtained colonial rights to Venezuela for like 20 years. What? They were looking for the lost city of El Dorado. So technically, you can kind of say Germans colonized the Americas, but it wasn't like a nationalized conquest thing. Fast forward even more, and then you get World War One. The monarchy ends, Treaty of Versailles, they lose land. Nazis come in, World War II, Germany splits in two for about 40 years. And then finally, we get the Germany we have today. East Germany consisting of these states is today still quite different from the rest of Germany as it was first occupied and influenced by the Soviet Union. They are generally not as well off economically as the rest of the country wow. as you can still see the blocky Soviet style. Wow, building. bro, look at that. This year, there's still the blocky so Soviet stuff. My god. Things sprawled throughout the regions. In fact, the city of Berlin was split in half and the west side was actually an enclave of West Germany only accessible by train and highway. You can even see from a satellite image the divide. East Berlin still uses the yellowish tinted huh. sulfur vapor light bulbs, whereas the west still uses fluorescent and mercury arc white tinted light bulbs. Now the funny thing is, although Berlin is the largest city in Germany, the busiest airports are actually Frankfurt, Munich, Dusseldorf, with Berlin Tegel ranking at number four. Otherwise, some top huh. notable landmarks and spots would be the Brandenburg Gate, the Valhalla, Cologne Cathedral, oh, the Ullminster Church, oh, the tallest beautiful. in the world, the Berlin Victory Column, and hundreds oh, and hundreds of castles all over. The most notable one probably wow. being Neuschwanstein, the concept behind Disney's Cinderella Castle. Germany also has over 400 zoos, more than any other country in the world. No way, more than the United States? We have zoos everywhere. We have zoos everywhere. New York City has like 10 or 15 of those. And of course, everybody knows about the Autobahn, the highway system in which if you see this sign, it means there's no speed limit. And it's like that for a huge portion of the roadway. And no what? wonder, considering how vast and wide those cultivated countrysides can get, 
Time for level two. That's complicated, bro. Okay, think of it this way. In Germany, the more down you go, the more up you move. Basically, Germany lies on the Atlantic Shelf in the north that starts with the mudflats in the North Sea. Seriously, this island right here is accessible only for a few hours by foot until the tide comes and floods everything. Then everything just kind of creeps up into the Alps in the south by Bavaria and Baden-Württemberg, with the highest mountain, Suchspitze, located right along the border with Austria. Kind of like France, Germany is filled with a vast irrigating network of rivers like the Spree, Elbe, Wesse, Rhine, and of course, the mighty Danube that starts here. About a third of the land is arable, and another third is woodland, and after a millennia of civilization, Germans have cultivated the crap out of their country. Most agriculture, huh. of course, happens in the north flat plains and the central regions of the country, which is, by the way, kind of like Europe's tornado alley. Wow, Due to its position you guys have tornadoes over there as well? That's crazy. Sandwich between the Arctic blasts of Scandinavia and the moist, warm jet streams of the Mediterranean below, Germany can be an atmospheric <laughs> war zone in the summer. There are wow. more tornadoes on average in Germany than any other country in Europe. Speaking of flat farmland, Germany is the world's largest rye and hop producer. Germans wow. absolutely freaking lutely love their bread. There are over 300 different kinds of bread in the country, really? more types than any other country in the world, and almost every meal incorporates some kind of slice or small bun or brötchen of bread. Hast du gluten free? Nein! Germans are heavy meat eaters, <laughs> specifically in pork. They basically know every possible way to cook a pig. Over 50 different types of sausage. Hey, 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 nothing wrong with that, man. I, I love pig. I usually don't eat it right now. Actually, my wife just cooked um, pork this morning. And we eat it for the for, for lunch. And we're going to save it for the rest of the week. So I just, when usually when she cooks pork, we eat one. One, the, like the day that she cooked the pork, then we wait three or four days to just keep cook the rest. But hey, nothing wrong with that, man. Exist alongside schnitzels, rouladen, sauerbraten, Ooh, schweinsaxe, mm. and at a big party you might find Spanfacken. Beer reigns supreme all over as the third largest consumers of beer after the Czech Republic. Even their president has no problem with public intoxication. And Austria. No Germany way, is world really? renowned for their beer, which by the way follows the Rheinheitsgebot rule in which they are only allowed to use water, hops, malt, and sometimes yeast. Nonetheless, about 1,300 breweries exist, pumping out over 5,000 brands. The oldest beer, continuously man. existing brewery in the world started by Benedictine monks in 1040 AD can be found here. Germany takes the environment very seriously and for the past two decades has been going on a major green revolution. As of today, they have the largest installed solar power capacity and green infrastructure practices like home installed turbines and solar panels have seen a huge surge in the past 10 years. Forests dominate the southern regions where the landscape gets hillier ah, and mountainous, the most famous one being the Black Forest or the Schwarzwald in Baden-Württemberg. Deer, bears, boar, foxes, yeah, badgers, and the national- Bears too, huh? No animal, the eagle can be found bears thriving in these parts. Nonetheless, economically, Germany is known mostly for their exceptional engineering and industry production. Companies we've all heard of like Volkswagen, BMW, Mercedes, Benz, Porsche, Audi, Telecom, Nivea, DHL, Bosch, Adidas, Puma, Adidas, Puma. Yeah, it's kind of like the whole Biscoito Bolacha thing from Brazil. Remember? Well, we have mud flats, tornadoes, pork, beer, mountains. All that's missing is people. Level three. Fun little side note, in Germany, this is three, not this. Now, if the EU was a family, Germany would kind of be like the dad who got out of rehab, reconciled with his wife and kids, and is taking his new life very seriously as he is haunted by the demons of his past every day. First of all, the country has about 82 million people and is the most populated in wow. the EU, second most in Europe after Russia, and has the fourth largest nominal GDP in the world. About 80% of the country identifies as ethnically German, 12% other Europeans, mostly Polish, Italian, Dutch, and so on. Turks make up about 3.5%, Asians at 2%, and the rest are made up of other groups like Africa. Okay and Americans. Also, they use the Euro, they use the C and F type outlets, and they yeah, drive yeah, that's true. The Germany is without a doubt a global powerhouse. It is the strongest economy in the EU and makes up about 16% of the union's population. Well, isn't it part of the culture? Didn't we see that in the, uh, in the First and the Second World War? It's just part of the nature of the culture. They want to just keep innovating. It's the third largest exporter and importer of goods in the world. After the United States, Germany is also the second most popular global migration destination. Germany experiences a high standard of living, tuition-free universities, if you get accepted, that is, a mostly government-subsidized universal healthcare system, about a quarter is still privatized, and state pension for retirement at age 65. Now, when it comes to language, things get a little tricky. Each state kind of has their own type of German. However, to get by, most Germans learn how to speak Hochdeutsh, or high. German, which is the standard dialect. The well, it's like the English here in the United States. Everybody knows English, but you go to different states, they all speak kind of different English. It's not as... If you go to Minnesota, they speak one kind of English, and then it's different from Louisiana English. You see what I'm saying? So each part of the every country, they have that. It's like it's a Sicilians. You go to Italy, you speak with Sicilians. 
uh, Tuscany, or Rome, you know, they all have a very type of different Italian. Probably some of them, they have like a very native language as well. European Charter, however, protects the minority languages of Frisian, Danish, Romani, Sorbian, which is like a Slavic-based language used along the Czech-Polish border, and Plattdeutsch, or Low German, which has similarities to Dutch and is typically used by the Amish and Mennonite communities across. That's another thing. In the United States, we have a lot of Amish, and the Amish community is growing fast. And they're they're keeping their culture. See, this is really very known. In terms of regional distinctions, though, Germany is kind of divided into five cultural areas: Rhineland, East and Middle Deutschland, North Deutschland, Baden-Württemberg, and Bavaria. Rhineland is on the west side and has a That's culture beautiful. somewhat wow. more influenced by France, more Catholic. Carnival celebrations are huge out here. East and Middle Germany was the part <laughs> that used to be its own country for 40 years, as it was influenced by the Soviets. Sorbians can also be found here too. Northern Germany has a coastal sea culture that identifies closer with Denmark and the Netherlands. They are also known for being kind of quiet and reserved. Baden-Württemberg has an interesting Swabian culture where they speak a dialect so thick that only about 40% of it is intelligible to other Germans. And then you have Bavaria, which is where the Americanized perpetuated stereotypes about Germany came from with Lederhosen, Dirndls, Half Timber, Beer Houses, and Cuckoo Clocks. For the record, Germans American. are sick of those stereotypes. It's like saying all Americans are cowboys with guns and horses. Speaking of stereotypes, nah, some- Nah, come on bro, come on bro, that's not- that's a good stereotype, I'm not gonna lie, but no, that's only in the South. The stereotypes in Germany include oh, Wyoming. If you go to Wyoming, Colorado, you might have find some cowboys, even in the North, but not that kind of cowboys. Things like Saxons being very indecisive, Berliners are always bragging about themselves, Swabians are stingy, Bavarians drink too much, Hessians talk too much, Holsteiners don't talk enough, and so on. <laughs> Words differ from regions too. For example, in High German, you would say Auf Wiedersehen, but in Bavarian, you would say Fiat die Gott. In Kölsch, you would say Tschüss, and in Rhineland, you might say Ayus. And there's so many wow. compound words to get really long and complicated, like Rindfleischertiketierungsüberwachungsaufgabenübertragungsgesetz. <coughs> this is because many words are mertudig, or ambiguous words, that are kind of elongated to give off an extensive meaning. Germans have very vivid imaginations and make up words for everything. Like my favorite word, Backpfeifengesicht. Not this time. By the way, for the record, <laughs> Let me that, like my favorite word, Backpfeifengesicht. A face in need of slapping punch. Gesicht. Not this time. By the way, for the record, <laughs> this letter makes a double S sound. However, spelling reformers have tried to decrease the usage of this letter in recent years, which has led to some protests. Germans also Where? love dubbing everything from foreign media into German. Some like this, some don't, but either way, it's here to stay. About 60% of the country identifies at least nominally as Christians, split between Protestants and Catholics. Germany was even the birthplace of the Protestant Reformation, split from the Catholic Church by Martin yeah, Luther. Martin Otherwise, Luther. the rest are mostly agnostic or irreligious, with a noticeable community of Muslims, mostly from the huge Turkish and Middle Eastern communities at about 5%, as well as a few Jews, Buddhists, and Hindus rounding up the remainder 1%. To kind of get a feel of what it's like to be German, you kind of have to understand where they've come from. After World War II, they kind of had a lot of work to do. However, it wasn't until the mid-50s and early 60s that the Wirtschaftswunde, or economic wonder, happened to which almost everybody got to work. Basically, this guy envisioned and implemented a social market economy combined with free market capitalism alongside socialist policies that is- that guy, That's cap. I don't think that was true. He was very free to free market. A free market. I, just, I knew he was going to throw some socialist stuff. There. fair competition in a welfare state. GDP increased what? by 80%, investments by 120%, labor force. But that's a free market. That has nothing to do with the state were utilized to the maximum, things started to get better. In Germany, all children are corralled into general public schools until age 10 when they are given the option to enroll in three different types of middle schools. Gymnasium, geared towards focusing on higher linguistic, mathematic, and science fields for universities. Realschule, a middle ground type of school. And Hauptschule, a school that is geared towards helping kids that seem to show promise in specific vocation or trades. You know what? I'm, in my commonwealth, we do that in Puerto Rico. I think it's one of, one of the few places in the United States that we have that so Puerto Rico there's what we call the vocational schools and you can decide whether you want to just spend the rest of your high school in middle school so let's say middle school to high school you can spend your rest of your years just learning vocational traits right so you have that option so that's very common here in the United States Germany also has the largest music market in the EU and the third in the world after the US and Japan they love preserving their heritage and important culture. bro well, of course we should do that in the United States. Preserve our culture, our heritage, each state. And I, I know there's people doing it, especially in the South. People still practicing ragtime and, you know, those kind of kind of music. It, it, that's pretty important. If you don't have a strong culture, your identity goes down the toilet. 
music and art. In fact, there are around 130 national orchestras, mostly Good. supported by public money, and artists get a 50% reduction in health insurance through a special type of offer in the legal system. One thing that still kind of supposedly sound, maintains sound, itself in Germany. expensive, bro. I'm not gonna lie, that sounds very expensive. Germany is the mindset of Vergangenheitsbewaltigung. Totally butchered that! Which kind of translates to a lingering sense of guilt from the past. Germans have reportedly some of the lowest levels of national pride, and unless if you're- Yeah, man, you, you see, this is the, this is what I, I have to say, man. I know y'all have a very difficult past, man, but you have to let it go, man. If you don't, that could be your demise. I'm telling you, bro. Pride for, we all, we all, <laughs> here in the, in, in the States, we have horrendous past. Like a lot of them, right? Not even mention the Civil War. The Civil War was bad, man. It was bad. It was bad. But we let it go. Some people want to still hold into it but no you have to let it go man you have to move forward and as a german people man just just carry the flag bro carry your culture carry your history even if it's bad or good man you're at a soccer game chances are you will almost never see anyone holding a german flag or waving it in any kind of like patriotic setting it's weird but it's kind of how things are you monster they've made great strides to move on from the past nazi flags and mein kampf are incredibly illegal items to own in germany and they even have a rule the volkswertsung which basically says you cannot talk trash by denying the past atrocities some people say this infringes on free speech others say you it's good because free speech bro you can't do that you can't do that you can't do that man you have to let it you have, you have to let it flow. i don't agree with it but you have to let it flow a little bit because then you're creating power you're creating power to something that happened. The way you don't create power to it is you just let everybody talk about it. That way it doesn't have power. Now, now the guy has more, more power dead than alive. Because it solidifies truth. Otherwise, some notable Germans throughout history include Charlemagne, although he was a Frank, but eh, I guess it kind of counts. Albrecht, Dürer, David Friedrich, Gutenberg, Bach, Beethoven, Karl Benz, Albert Einstein, although Americans would like to claim that he moved to the US and became an American. Johannes Kepler, Johann Wolfgang von Goethe, Friedrich Schiller, Michael Shoemaker, Alex von Humboldt, and of course, Karl Marx and Friedrich Engels co-founded Marxism. <coughs> <coughs> but one thing Germans do best would have to be diplomacy. To this day, the German passport holds the most visa-free nations out of any other country in the world, just beating Sweden. Therefore, huh. you can kind of conclude that Germany kind of knows how to relate to people. Let's find out how in the final round, level four. Germany knows how to make friends. They have over 220 diplomatic missions abroad and over 350 honorary consuls and have an incredibly high position of authority in the EU. Their closest African friend would probably be Namibia. As a former German colony way back in the 19th century, Namibia held on relations and to this day, German is still a recognized language in Namibia. Germans oh, have been supporting and sharing ties both economically and ideologically for over a century. India and South Korea are really close friends in Asia. India supported both East and West Germany during the Cold War and after reunification, they were like, even better! And Germany is to South Korea what Japan is to France. They love to piggyback off of each other's ideas and cultures, especially in the automotive industry. Many South Koreans were sent to Germany after the Korean War to work abroad and study, and Germans have been growing in fascination with visiting South Korea. The US is probably the closest ally outside of the EU. About 30% of Americans claim German heritage, and after 100%. World War II, the Marshall Plan allowed the US to give post-war aid to Germany, which helped kickstart the economic recovery. Germany yeah. was a key figure in the formation of the State of Israel after World War II, which Good. after the Holocaust left an obligation to invest in the building up of a Jewish community. Turkey is probably the closest Middle Eastern ally as the Turks make up the largest Asian demographic in Germany, although many of them may or may Turk not also Asian. identify- Turk Asian? Are they? As Kurds, but since Kurds don't have a state of their own, they usually go under Turkish passports when immigrating and are documented as such. Their best friends, however, would probably be literally all their neighbors. The thing is, Germany is kind of like Bosnia and Herzegovina, in which, by default, they kind of get friends based off of the regional alliances. Bavarians get along with Austrians, Baden-Württembergs get along with Switzerland, East Germany has good relations with the Slavic countries, the Rhine states love Belgium, Luxembourg, and France, and the North side loves the Netherlands and Denmark. France, though, is kind of like the trophy wife of Germany, as the two have had an angry start, but then eventually fell in love and worked together beautifully. France is like the beautiful flashy spokesperson for the EU that stands in the spotlight as Germany stands in the background, managing all the money and logistical work. In conclusion, ah, although Germanic peoples have existed for thousands of years, an actual unified German state didn't appear until kind of recently, and the brief time that they've been around, they've kind of gone through some of the most intense, world-revolutionizing historical events possibly imagined. Yet, they've come out working hard and building their way up to become a world superpower. You gotta give it to them. There's something about the Germans. And with that, final boss level complete. Stay tuned, another African state Germany has ties to, Ghana, is coming up next. 
Oh, very good, very good, very interesting, very interesting. Um, <clears throat> it, it's clear that right now Germany have a very strong socialist state. I mean, not completely, but I know they have very high taxes. Am I wrong in that regard? Just let me know. Uh, but just so far, Germany looks like a very full, beautiful country. Uh, of course, having different culture inside the German state is normal. It's like us Americans. You know, you go to New York, New York have a different culture from from Oregon, right? Ohio. You know, like, it's clear. You go to Massachusetts, you have a very strong Irish culture. You go down to Texas, some places, they still speak German down there. There's some old towns in Texas speak German. You go to Louisiana, you see a lot of French culture. You see what I'm saying? But we all st still... Uh, American. You go to California, there's a lot of Hispanic culture. Of course, you go to Puerto Rico, they speak a lot of Spanish. As far we, well, we all Americans, right? We all, we all, no, flesh to the flag. So that's completely fine. But we all agree that we are Americans. So the same with Germany. They all have different cultures. Some of those cultures, they they have the small native cult, um, languages, and they try to preserve it, which I think is is great. But one thing I have to say, and I know you know, some of you Germans, you, they feel kind of, oh, no, man, hey, it's okay, man. Just wave your flag. It's fine, bro. Don't let your past, your past to be the guilt and destruction of your future, man. Just wave the flag, man. It's fine. It's okay. It's okay. We all make bad mistakes. I'm from Puerto Rico, bro. And we have bad past. Uh, we have a bad, very, very bad, bad, bad past as well. Right? I mean, we have, um, we, is, is, it, before the United States came to Puerto Rico, we, um, we, we have slaves even after the United States finished the, the, um, the civil war. I think uh, it was 1873. I'm not mistaken around that time <clears throat> that we abolished slavery in Puerto Rico. So we are not clear. So we have all, you know, very, bad, very bad past. Just let it go. Move forward, man. Just feel proud to be Germans. You know, it just very high. And don't be afraid to talk about the, the past either, man. I'm not afraid to talk about the Civil War, right? We have a bad Civil War, but I mean, it's, but we have to talk about it. Knowing about your history is very important because then that way you don't give it power, right? Especially in the United States, we always have problems here, man. It's, you know, we talk about the 1950s, 1960s, the 70s, the 80s, I mean, the 90s and the crime, you know, then we had the first and second, uh, the second world war, and then we have the civil war as well. Oh, in the Hispanic, I mean, this you can keep going, right? But I'm not afraid to just still be proud to be an American, right? Very good video, man. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Let me know if you guys agree with me or disagree with me. I will see you in the next one. I'm out. Peace.